Panola Toastmasters, judges, directors, and welcome guests. The following is a true story. Eric, you jump first. No, Brian, you jump first. That is Brian and I on top of a 40-foot high houseboat on the edge of Lake Washington back when we were 20 years old, daring each other to be the first to launch ourselves out into that darkness and hit the icy cold waters below, hopefully missing one of the logs that's floating around down there. Eric, if you're not going to jump, we might as well go home. And with that, I launched myself out there. And when I hit, my right arm got wrenched up above my head so hard it dislocated it, which is not a good thing when you're 20 feet under the water screaming and you need that air to find the surface and it's in the middle of the night and there aren't any bubbles to follow. So, I managed to survive. Brian managed to survive, who jumped a couple seconds later. And we even survived the car trip on the way home, where I had to drive my stick shift with my left hand while Brian was helping me with the wheel. <laughs> Flash forward to four years ago. Brian shows up, he says, Eric, I gotta talk to you. I'm thinking about leaving my wife. And I said, Brian, What's the matter with her? Is she a junkie? Brian says, no, that's not it. I said, is she cheating on you? He said, no, that's not it. I said, you know, there's a story about a husband and a wife sharing a bottle of wine. And the woman looks over to the husband and says, boy, I love you. And the husband says, is that you talking or the wine? <laughs> and the woman says, oh, it's me talking about the wine. <laughs> Brian says, no, she's not a lush. And I said, well, what is it, Brian? Is she burning your toast every morning? Brian says, Eric, do you remember when we were out on that houseboat back when we were 20, how much fun we had? And I said, fun might be one way to describe it, but yes, it was pretty thrilling. He said, I haven't felt like that in years. In years, I'm just stuck in a rut. My marriage isn't working. I'm bored. I don't like going home. I miss that thrill of the chase. And I said, Brian, a marriage, you've been married 23 years, that's a sacred bond. It's not something that you should throw away because you happen to be bored. You need to go home and try and make that marriage work. You've got two kids. They deserve to grow up with a mom and a dad. And Brian said that he would think about it. And he did for about two weeks. And then he threw in the towel, filed his divorce papers, and moved off to Barrow, Alaska. Now, if you guys don't know Barrow, Alaska, on a cold, on a warm day, it's negative 10 degrees. On a cold day with wind chill factor, it's negative 95 degrees. Consequently, there's only 4,000 people who live in Barrow, Alaska. 3,200 men chasing after 800 women. If Brian wanted the thrill of the chase, he couldn't have picked a more competitive environment <laughs> anywhere in the United States, with the possible exception of the campuses of Caltech and MIT. <laughs> so Brian is a district attorney. It's his job to prosecute bad guys, and one of the worst of the worst is a gentleman who goes by the nickname Bun Bun. And Bun Bun has his nickname because one set of buns is not enough for him. He is a womanizer. And Brian is interviewing his common-law wife, who got beaten up by Bun Bun only a week before. And as he's interviewing Mabel, you know, Mabel is really cute. And Mabel's looking up at Brian and thinking, Brian is really cute. So Brian takes this file, he hands it to his assistant, says, you prosecute Bun Bun, that'd be a conflict of interest. I'm dating Mabel. <laughs> so the two of them start dating, and after a week, Mabel shows up and all of her tires have been slashed. Brian puts two and two together and says, you think Bun Bun is trying to send us a message? Is he going to drive by and spray the house with a bunch of bullets? And Mabel says, well, he's never done that before. <laughs> so the two of them keep dating. And two weeks later, Brian can't help himself. He has to show off his new girlfriend. So she brings him to the local track and they're they're running around the track together, and Brian needs to let everybody know who's the man and who's got the new girlfriend, and isn't she cute? And, and who happens to be there but Bun Bun? And Bun Bun is living. 
So when they finish up, they go back to Mabel's house. And Mabel's off taking a shower in the next room. Brian's in the living room. It's about 10 o'clock at night. And who comes busting in the front door? Boom! But Bun Bun. And Bun Bun looks right at Brian and says, Who the hell are you? And this is where Brian makes his third mistake. See, Brian's first mistake was leaving his wife for no good reason. Brian's second mistake was dating the common law wife of a convicted felon. And Brian's third mistake is having provoked the felon into a gunfight. Brian forgot to bring his own gun. Brian leans back, smirks, and thinks, I've got the girl, you don't, what are you going to do about it? And Bun Bun rips aside his jacket, takes out his double-barreled shotgun, and blam, blam! Puts two slugs right through Brian's forehead. Brian's brains come blasting out against the wall and spurting out, ricocheting into the room, leaving a bloody trail of carnage. And at that point, Bun Bun runs into the next room and grabs Mabel, who's cowering in the closet half-naked, drags her out and says, Look what you made me do! Mabel knows it's probably going to be her turn next, so she jumps on Bun Bun to prevent him from reloading so she can get close enough to the door to run outside, jump in the car, and race to the police station. Unfortunately, this is a true story. And right now, Mabel can't find anyone who's willing to date her. Bun Bun is rotting in jail. Barrow's a pretty small place. It didn't take long for them to find him and throw his butt in jail. His Bun Bun in jail. Brian, what's the moral of this unfortunately true story? Fellow Toastmasters, go home. Make up with your spouses. Make that marriage work. Invest in that relationship. Make it exciting. Make it fun. Or you too could end up like my best man Brian, or what's left of him, buried six foot under the Alaskan permafrost. Fellow Toastmasters.